and uh, the language modeling block four. And uh, Michal Michura is here speaking on behalf of his colleagues. And the paper is Relations, Relations Everywhere, an introduction to the DMLEX data model. Thank you, Michal. Okay, thank, uh, thanks very much. Um, so I'm the first person on the list there, and I'm speaking on behalf of a group of authors. And together, as a group of authors, we're obviously talking on behalf of an even larger group of the members of an organization where we are creating a new standardized data model for lexicography called DMLEX, which you may have heard of. And you may be wondering what DMLEX is. So the purpose of this presentation today is to clarify that, to explain what DMLEX is, uh, uh, why it exists, and also to invite you to participate in the public reviews process of the DMLEX standardization effort, which is starting really soon, this autumn. So my plan for the next 20 minutes is that I want to sort of explain the background behind DMLEX, why it exists, what sort of standard it is. Then I want to take you on a short but hopefully detailed enough guided tour of the DMLEX standard, which is basically a very long document. And finally, I'll mention a few uh, sort of planned and intended uses for DMLEX. So the first thing that probably comes into your mind when you hear the word standard and lexicography together is uh, does the world really need another lexicographic data standard because we already have a couple of those of course we have you know TEI lex zero then we have TMF uh, sorry LMF which is an ISO standard then we have ontolex lemon in the semantic web universe and then pretty much every dictionary project is happy enough just designing their own entry schema us. So do we really need to add another uh, data format into this mix? But my answer to that is that this is the wrong question because that's totally not what we're doing. We're not just creating another data format. What we're doing is something a bit more abstract, a bit more high level than that. We're creating a data model. When you're modeling data, when you're investigating how you could represent some type of content in a computer application, you can do that on multiple levels of abstraction. And what the, the level of abstraction we are aiming at is slightly higher than any particular file format. Um, so the data model that we're designing is um, kind of independent of any specific implementation or serialization. So we're designing a kind of an abstract inventory of data types and the relationships that may exist between them and how they may be combined together. And in separation from that, we're offering the world a number of possible implementations of this in different formats, in different formalisms. So there's a suggested or, or, or proposed uh, serialization for XML, another one for JSON, yet another one for relational databases, you know, the SQL universe, which may be a little bit unusual for lexicography, but that, that's what we're doing anyway. I'll, I'll explain later why. You can also implement DMLEX as a semantic web triple store and things like that. So this is the level of abstraction we're, we're aiming at. You can also think about DMLEX as a kind of a set of recommendations for how you might want to begin thinking about representing lexicographic data in a computer application if you're beginning to think about designing a new dictionary project. Right, because we're basically one of our design goals is that we're aiming for kind of modern born digital dictionaries, definitely not retro digitized ones. That area is already well catered for by the likes of uh, TI. And what we want to do is something which is uh, very modern and very digital and kind of makes use of the possibilities that the digital medium offers lexicography and maybe depart a bit from this tree structured data meta model that everybody has been using for the last couple of decades in lexicography and do something more modern, something that allows us to do things which were previously difficult to do in a sort of uh, machine readable dictionaries. And obviously we're doing this under the umbrella of an organization called OASIS. 
uh, which again you may or may not know what it is. Oasis is a non-profit organization in the IT industry which oversees the creation of open standards in the IT industry, not just language standards but sort of IT standards generally. And within this organization we created a technical committee called Lexidma, uh, Lexical uh, Data Model and API, that's what the abbreviation stands for. And in this technical committee we're creating this standardized data model and the, the reason why we think that we need one in the first place is that the need for that kind of emerged out of the Elexis project, which uh, you may have heard of again. The Elexis project has now finished, but this effort is still going on, still continuing. So it's one of the branches that has sprung up from the Elexis project. And as I have said, we are starting the public reviews process very soon. So the purpose of my presentation is to maybe whet your appetite so that you can go, you want to go to the website afterwards and actually read the standard and uh, uh, maybe provide comments, constructive feedback and help us improve the standard before it actually becomes an official OASIS standard. Hmm. So let me now take you on a tour of the actual document, the actual standard. The document is divided into sections or chapters. There's a, uh, it begins with something called the DMLEX core, which defines a core vocabulary of sort of data types, which you can use to construct like the basic kind of entries and senses structure of a dictionary, monolingual one. And then this core is followed by a sequence of modules and each module, so you can choose to implement it or not if you need that particular functionality. So there's a module for bilingual dictionaries. There's a module for doing, uh, for example, etymology. There's a module for doing links between entries and things like that. So let me just uh, show you a couple of examples for how we model certain lexicographical things in the DMLEX model. So in the DMLEX core, we define a number of data types for basically modeling the basic uh, uh, entries and senses, uh, hierarchy of um, you know dictionaries. In this particular part of the standard, we're not inventing any new concepts. We're basically just uh, representing the classical tree structured kind of structure that you usually have in dictionary entries. So nothing terribly innovative there. And then in the following chapters in the standard, we kind of hang additional things on to this. For example, we have a module called the cross-lingual module, which you can choose to implement in your implementation of DMLEX if you want to support the, the modeling of bilingual or multilingual dictionaries. So this kind of adds to your structure a number of data types you can use for representing you know, translations and annotating those translations with things like labels and things like that, part of speech labels and so on. Then we have another module for what we call controlled values. You know, in every dictionary schema, you usually have like a closed list inventory of things like part of speech tags and usage labels and the tags you use for labeling inflected forms. So in DMLEX, we have uh, an inventory of data types which you can use for sort of uh, setting up these inventories in your specific dictionary project. Uh, you can treat them as hard constraints or not, that depends on your implementation. And you can also describe various sort of constraints between these sets of tags. So you can, for example, say that certain tags for labeling inflected forms can only be used within entries that are labeled with certain parts of speech. So you can say that only nouns can have plurals, but verbs cannot and things like that. All right. So we have a very rich inventory that allows you to do these things. We're not actually defining any control values ourselves. That's not what the data model is about. We're just offering you uh, mechanics for defining your own ones for your own projects. And also there are uh, object types in the data model for linking the tags that you have defined to external inventories, external ontologies, so that you can describe in a machine readable way what these tags mean. 
Then we have a module for creating something we call links or relations between various objects in, in your lexicographical resource, in your dictionary. And this is where we are, where we get really innovative. This is where we kind of break away from this uh, traditional tree structured model of dictionaries and do lots of cool things that kind of connect uh, things like entries and senses across different entries or within the same entry. So we use links for, for example, creating things that are usually shown to end users as cross references, but internally they are modeled as like uh, relations that exist between senses in different entries. So for example, this is how you might model the relation of antonymy between two senses somewhere in your dictionary. So you create a relation object, you say that it has a certain type such as antonyms and you say who the, who the members of this relation are, okay? You can also create, for your specific dictionary project, you can create an inventory of these different types of relations that are going to exist in your dictionary and for each type of relation you can declare that it's going to contain members of this type. There can, there must be, there, you can say things like there must always be at least two of them or there can always only be two of them and how they're supposed to be shown to the end user when an entry is shown to, is being shown to a human user. What is your, let's say your website where you're showing your dictionary entries, what is that supposed to do with the, with the relations? Is it supposed to show them as a clickable link or is it supposed to actually embed the entire, the entire target of the cross reference as a sub entry and things like that. So you can, we have a very sophisticated system for modeling lots of types of relations in DMLX and we use relations for even for modeling things which traditionally would be modeled in lexicography as complicated kind of um, recursive structures of let's say hierarchies of senses inside senses or sub-entries inside sub-entries. We have decided to redesign and rethink how we model these things in uh, computationally in applications. And we propose that in the future, people model these things as relations between things instead of just as hierarchical uh, recursive tree structures. So for example, in DMX, we do not actually allow, we do not actually allow uh, sort of um, hierarchical embeddings of senses inside senses. Instead, we recommend that you create a flat list of senses in each entry, and then you connect them together using relations to indicate which senses are supposed to be shown as sub-senses under other senses. And we do something similar for things like, for example, variants, orthographical variants. We do not allow in DMLEX for an entry to have uh, to have multiple head words or to have a head word and then also some variant head words and things like that because we think that this makes dictionary entries kind of difficult to process for computer applications. So for computer applications it's, advan it's an advantage to be able to assume that an entry will always only have one head word. But on the other hand for the purposes of showing something to a human user you probably want to connect your, let's say, orthographical variants using, using some kind of a relation so that you can show them together on the same screen for your human users. So we're giving you the, uh, the tools you need in DMLX to model these relations and then decide how you want to display them to human users. So this is an example of how we're going for this kind of dual use of lexicographic resources. There, uh, it's the object model or the data model is meant to be expressive enough so that it expresses everything that people usually want to express in dictionaries, but it wants to do it in a way which is very friendly towards kind of IT applications so that it becomes relatively easy to write computer programs that process dictionary data. So no recursive uh, tree structures, no complicated, uh, you know, multiple head words per entry and things like that. So that's enough about the linking module. That's kind of the highlight of the standard because that's where we are doing the most innovative bits. Then we have another module for doing things like uh, inline markup or what, what we call annotations. So you can implement that module to do certain things like highlighting occurrences of the head word in usage examples and uh, marking up occurrences of collocates inside usage examples and things like that. 
Then we have yet another module for representing etymology. So there's an etymology object. Each entry can have one or more of those to uh, sort of represent alternative uh, hypotheses about the etymology of the head words. And then there's a there's a inventory of objects that you can use to kind of uh, represent etymological information in a way which is relatively strictly structured. It's not just free text as you often have in etymological dictionaries. It's relatively uh, sort of strictly structured so that it becomes kind of computationally tractable, usable for computational purposes. And that, that takes us to the end of this guided tour. I realize that this has not been detailed, not nearly detailed enough for anybody who is seriously interested in data modeling in lexicography. So you need to really go and actually read the standard if you want to. And uh, we will definitely welcome that because the public reviews process will help us to refine it even further. Uh, towards the end, I just want to mention that we're not just designing this in a vacuum. We want we, we have specific applications in mind. So one of the offshoots of the Elexis project is this uh, this dictionary matrix where dictionaries are being linked. And uh, in this kind of sub project, we want to in the future we want to use the uh, the DMLX data model because it's very easy to work with kind of computationally compared to uh, DM like uh, compared to uh, TI like zero which it is using now and also there are plans to kind of develop a lexicographic editor like some future version of lexonomy which would be based not on this kind of tree structured completely open unrestricted xml model but would be based on the dmlex object model uh, it's not clear yet exactly who is going to develop that, but we want to sort of go in that direction because if I look back at the history of the Laxonomy project, I have to say that some of the design, design decisions that had been made towards the beginning were probably not exactly the best idea because Laxonomy, as you probably know, is basically a glorified editor for XML files where, where you are free to design your own XML schema and it's completely unrestricted. And it turns out from the way that people have been using it over the last couple of years, that it's probably a good idea to give people slightly more restricted guidance or a slightly more restricted inventory of uh, object types and uh, rules for how they may be combined together. And then the dictionaries become kind of more uh, open to sort of uh, not just for showing dictionary entries to human users on a two-dimensional surface, but also for kind of non-classical use cases for, you know, various computational uh, uh, purposes such as linking dictionaries together or linking dictionary, linking dictionary entries to text and things like that. So this is what we want to do with DMLX in the future. It's not really something that's supposed to replace existing standards because all the, ex all the existing standards have their own use cases. But uh, the use case for DMLX is if, is if you want to build very modern digital dictionaries which are optimized not for human consumption but also for computational purposes. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to say about DMLX. Seriously, do go to the website, do download the PDF and read it on the way back home from Elex. So thanks very much. So thank you very much, Michal. Before I go to the audience, there is a question from the chat, so we can start there. Uh, sorry, if this is a silly question. We use Telex software. Are you saying that we could use this instead? Uh, they use Telex, uh, yes. Uh, well, Telex, as far as I understand, is in some sense similar to Lexonomy in that it allows you to design your own uh, completely unrestricted kind of uh, tree structured schema. Um, but that is, that's, uh, the question is slightly misguided because the DMLX is not really something you can download and start using. It's a specification, right? It's, a, it's an object model. If in the near future we do develop a lexicographic editor based on DMLX, then you will be able to use that, yes. But at the moment, there's really no uh, interpretation, there's no implementation of DMLX yet. Thank you. There is a follow up question from the uh, same. Uh, person, is it free or will it stay free? 
Oh, it's free. It's an open standard. The idea, the whole idea of the OASIS organization is that the standards are completely freely accessible. It's not like ISO where you have to pay for them, right? It's uh, completely free and even the process of creating the standard is completely open and transparent and uh, it's, it's all free. Nobody has to pay for anything. Actually, we pay for uh, allowing ourselves to be kind of restricted by the rules of OASIS so that there's a there's a bureaucratic process where we do have to go through these public reviews and we are obliged to take p feedback into consideration and then we vote and then it becomes a, becomes a standard but in this postmodern world a standard means it's a recommendation right based on some kind of a consensus in the industry but it's not like anybody is legally obliged to to follow this right so um it's very open and always will be. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to ask if you could go back to the relations uh, module. So um, you said that you can include your own relations, you can define them. Do you plan to use uh, or to include sequential relations or event type relations. The reason I'm asking is because I'm thinking about uh, the Ontolex um, uh, uh, also doesn't have semantic frames, the possibility to define semantic frames yet. So they do have the frames module or pop art to define frames, but it's actually mm -hmm. syntactic frames that are balanced descriptions. So do you plan, since there are many resources that have these, you know, if you have an event and you could put senses, different senses under it to say that these are phases of event or sequences of a process. So could you basically include those relations uh, defined as, as your own? You could, yeah, because the members of a relation can be ordered and they can, they can be assigned different roles in the relation. So a more typical use case for that would be if you're modeling, let's say, meronymy, uh, the relationship between parts and wholes. So you can have a relation for that and you can say which member is the part and which one is the whole. And you can design your own inventory of relation types and role types. So you could decide, you could create a relation type that says this is a frame. And for each frame, you could, for each, for that, you could define different role types. Yeah, you could do that. It's not something we kind of intentionally targeted, but it seems that this is pretty much in scope. Yeah, you could do this. Yeah. Yes, we have time for, oh, yeah, we have more questions. Chris and then Milan, yeah. So now you showed mainly linking within the dictionary. Uh, yesterday, we uh, Simon already that did an advertisement for you, saying that we will also be able to use it to link to the Elexis dictionary matrix. So, what's the functionality for linking to other resources outside of your own dictionary? Yeah, the the mechanics is the same. Okay, so we uh, the the relation op the relation object type can be used for linking across different lexicographic resources. You can even define when you're defining your inventory of relation types, you can define which uh, types of objects they're allowed to link, for example, senses or entries or some combinations of these. And when it's, for example, senses, you can define whether those, whether those senses are supposed to be within the same entry or not necessarily, but within the same dictionary or not even necessarily that and just linking things across different dictionaries. So that has very explicitly been one, one of the design goals that we facilitate cross dictionary kind of uh, links. So definitely, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, perhaps a bit also in Anna and Chris's questions, there is the Ontolex model and which has the Lexicog module. So what is missing and uh, why go and reinvent the wheel? And how about if things are missing, work on that? There is a community that's been working on that for a long time. In the tree idea, isn't that something which is really more relevant for print dictionaries and XML and sort of we are we are already in the third decade of this century. So like six years ago, it, I think it was at Elex in Portugal, uh, Jorge Gracia and I had a talk about uh, linked data native lexicography. 
So why go and do all of this again, in a way? And uh, the having different modules for different types of, like you were saying, bilingual or monolingual, whereas you can have one which can bring it all together. Yeah, there's a couple of things that we always thought were missing in Ontolex. For example, a good native support for keeping things in the order in which lexicographers want them. That's a well-known problem with uh, the semantic web in general, that it doesn't preserve the order. So we have everywhere in DMLEX where we thought that it might be necessary that lexicographers might want to keep, might want to keep things in a certain order. There's a way that you can express that in DMLEX. This is very difficult to do in Ontolex. Um, yeah, and, and, and also DMLEX allows you to define dictionary schemas which are a lot more restricted than what Ontolex allows you to do. For example, the bit I was mentioning about having always be, being guaranteed, guaranteed to only have one head word per entry. We thought that these things were important, that we wanted something, something that allowed us to design dictionary entries, dictionary schemas that were, that were a little bit more restricted. And also, um, DMLEX isn't really optimized towards any particular meta model. Okay, so the meta model of Ontolex is this uh, is RDF triples, triples, right? Then the meta model of uh, TEI like zero is tree structured XML. Okay, so a tree structure. We wanted to design something which was more generic than that and which was relatively straightforwardly implementable basically anywhere. So you can implement this as a relational database and it is doable because it has a fairly restricted inventory of types and you can map them onto database tables and relations between them relatively straightforwardly. Or if you want, you can implement this as a tree of XML where some of the relations would be represented as through kind of pairs of IDs, things like that. So we wanted something really uni more universal universal than Ontolex. So for that reason, after careful deliberation, we decided that we do want to build something of our own, something which would be kind of more optimized towards um, the things that people want to do with dictionaries, or, uh, sort of lexicographers want to do with dictionaries and not just uh, sort of semanticists and people who are interested in, in ontologies. We think that Ontolex, uh, shows its heritage of sort of uh, its original purpose, or maybe it still is its purpose, is to kind of verbalize ontologies, right? But that's not really our goal here. Our goal is to represent lexicographical content types. So for that reason, we have decided to go this way. It is certainly possible to disagree with that, and people will disagree with that, and for that reason, people will, people will prefer to use something else. But we hope that in the next couple of years, we will convince the lexicographic community that uh, this is a very expressive scheme which uh, people find nice and friendly to work with. So um, I'm not sure if you find that a satisfactory answer, but that's kind of the answer we can give. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been told that since we are not moving, we can take the five minute break to extend the discussion a little bit. So Milos wants to say a word, then there is a question from the online and then there is Simon. And then I think we'll have to go, okay? Very quick, so I would just really like to emphasize the last part of what you said. It's not pr a problem what's missing in Ontolex. The problem is what is there extra that we do not need and heavily affects the adoption. We want a standard uh, where the adoption, the development to make tools that work with it, the development would take days, not months, like with Ontolex. And the second thing, uh, when you were mentioning that sort of a comment, when we were mentioning who is going to do that, uh, is being done as we speak here. We actually wanted to have a software demonstration for Lexonomy. We haven't managed, but don't worry, it's not some future plans. It's being done as we speak. Another question from the chat. Um, I just want to make sure if version 1.0 of 27th of March 2023 is the most recent version, or when will the latest version be released? Yeah, we, the version of the standard that they mean, yeah. Uh, we, have, we have been a little sloppy with version numbering, so I think it's still version 1.0 or something, but whichever the latest version you will see on our website now, that's, that's the latest version, yeah, I'm afraid. <laughs> when we get to the public review stage, we will be more strict about version numbers, but at the moment, you just need to go there and download the latest version. At this point, the document is pretty stable, so it isn't going to be changing very often. 
Yeah, and I just want to <coughs> uh, make sure that people are at ease. So uh, when this draft comes out, we should also have uh, mappings to ont ontolex. So you shouldn't be uh, worried about that. Or I mean, in some sense, it, it doesn't really matter if you work in ontolex or in DMLex or wherever, because you will be able to uh, just go from one to another. Yeah. Now I didn't mention mappings, but we have mappings too. So. <laughs> So with that, we um, know we might have some more questions, so please, maybe during lunch or email, yeah? And uh, we then finish the session. Thank you so much, Michal.